Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the comic shop. It's BZ Comics. And in this one, we're gonna be taking just a little bit of a break from making helmets and I'm gonna be showing you guys like a chapter. So in this chapter, basically what I'm gonna be showing you guys is how to save 3D prints. If you ever have a 3D print that may have a layer shift, maybe didn't print out right, maybe one part printed and you had to cut another piece and now you have to solder those two pieces together. This is gonna show you how to do everything in one. And maybe even if you're not looking to put things together, Maybe if you just have a satisfaction from seeing things go from looking busted to looking nice, this is gonna definitely be the video for you. And in this video, this is also part of a full video where I'm gonna be making this helmet look real. So make sure you guys do stay tuned for that and stay tuned for my sponsor, PCBWay, who actually sent these over and made a resin print for me for the lenses. Stay tuned guys. In the meantime, let's get to it. This helmet came out perfect. The finish is glass. I made two and the first one came out without a problem. But for some reason on the K1 Max, which has been a great 3D printer for me, I keep getting these layer shifts at like a certain height. So instead of wasting this print, which was a 16 hour print, which I don't want to do because it's about a half a roll of filament, I just basically want to cut from the inside. And once I get the inside back, preferably open, basically what I want to do is just lift this up and then just come off the seams and just kind of like tear this apart like this. Again, I don't want to mess up any of this detail. It's not going to be that big of a deal, but let's go ahead and get it started. Okay, so first I started out with moving all the over extrusion hairs. That's at least what I call them. So any dirt or debris that was in the way, I started to remove that first. And then after that, you can see I started to solder. Now, when I started to solder this, you'll notice that some of the over extrusion the shift that happened kind of didn't line up from the inside to the outside so some of this bracing that i started to cut from the inside didn't really loosen everything from the outside if that makes any sense to you guys but it's a shift so i had to work my way from both sides from the outside to the inside and from the inside to the outside it's not as confusing as it sounds it's basically just cutting off any of the pieces what i'm going to gonna basically do is um continue to go basically on the outside from where I soldered on the inside and kind of just like loosen the filament here like this and just go along the line and kind of like crack it up like that. It's kind of crazy but you get the idea. So I'm going under it like that and again just making sure it's be just like as delicate as possible. I might even though I really don't want to I might have to solder some of this out on the front but this should this should work all right everything is kind of going good so far so i did have to get a little bit of the outside as you can see but what i kind of did was like basically went in at an angle just to kind of weaken the filament from this side and to help me basically continue and just like work my way through and then start to pop this up a little bit at the end of the day it's kind of the same thing like if i how I used to make my helmets, I would slice it and then have to put it back together. So no matter what, we're gonna get through it. You just gotta take your time. But I don't wanna do this again for 16 hours. So everything else is coming apart nice and smooth. But as you get to the end, it's like, oh my goodness. So let me just be careful and take my time. Uh, I'll probably just solder cut the rest of this from the inside and just continue to weaken the filament basically now i know you guys have been there before it's always the last piece that starts to give you an issue so like i said from the inside to the outside that difference was what was giving me the struggle there since everything was in a straight cut i had to work my way through the two sides but it wasn't as hard as it's as it sounds most of it just came up by uh, popping out. So just me using my screwdriver to pop everything out. But it was just, just, just this little edge right here where I had to work it out a little bit. Now in times and places like these, this is where you wanna take your most care and concern because if I just ripped this off, this could have took off some of the exterior filament or some of the exterior finish and could have made this look a lot worse. All 
right, so as you can see, there's a lot of mess that came from the actual slice itself. You can see like there are little hairs and everything sticking up. So you want to get this surface as flat as possible. So that way, as I solder everything, it, it just becomes a lot easier. Now, what I could do is just take the soldering iron and just flatten all this stuff out, but that would be lazy. As I always say, we got to get in that elbow grease. What I'm mainly doing is working on, so as you can see from here, let me say, or show it here. You can see that this piece is more so on the inside of the helmet. So I'm mainly focusing on cutting on that stuff. I don't want to lose anything on, on the aesthetics part as much as possible, which will be the outer layer. So anything on the outer layer, I'm just going to basically focus on sanding that. And then again, if we have any gaps from the outside, I'll show you guys again in the main video for this build, how we'll put that together with Spot Putty Bondo, some leftover filament, the whole nine. Now, typically I will go just a step further and sand both of these sides down just so that way they line up just that much easier. But after I cut off all of these edges, there weren't any jagged edges, <laughs> jagged edge, but yeah, there weren't any jagged edges. So I thought this was good enough to just go from here. Not much there. And basically what I like to do is basically stand above the print, get like an overhead view. And basically just make sure from the overhead view that everything lines up. And again from here, if there is a little bit of an overhang, it's not going to be the end of the world because I'm going to be able to sand it. I can see that the lines are good. So the sides and the back. And from here. Typically I would start from the inside, but on this one again, I want to make sure that everything is evenly lined up. So I turn the temperature down just a little. And again, with all this stuff, I want to <laughs> kind of make sure that I'm not shooting myself in the foot anymore. So I'm going to be very gentle with seaming these two lines together because from the inside, that's where I go a lot thicker. But this way I at least make sure that everything is lined up. And I know from there I can just be as tough as possible. As you see I'm kind of just like laying the edge on the surface and kind of just like dragging back and forth a little. I'm just trying to really work on making that line one. You'll see a few dents, a few imperfections. Again, anytime you do this, you are going to have to put some bondo and spot putty or some kind of fillers. But like I said, again, I'm not trying to make it too crazy. I just want it to stick. Now this part just takes a little bit of time and patience. There's no right solder and iron that I can kind of recommend and say, hey, get this solder and iron, it's gonna solve all your problems. Kind of just find one that works for you. But what I would recommend is to make sure that it does have a temperature gauge. That way you can distribute the heat the way that you want to. But this is just a, a simple process of just melting two sides together. It's what the 3D printer already does with the filament, heats it up and connects it. So you're just going over it, doing what has already been happening to it and just making sure everything lines up and connects perfectly. Now the one part that I didn't get was me adding the extra bondo and filament to the back just to connect everything. But you can see some of my other videos where I do exactly those steps. What you guys think? <laughs> I think that's a lot better than what it was looking like. Now again, this is just the first process of it. Obviously I'm not going to paint this right here. The main focus from here is going to be sanding, so I'll be ready to get a lot of elbow grease in. <laughs> I'm never one to hide anything, so from the back, this is where a lot of that sanding is going to come in. 
So I'm gonna have to palm sand a lot of this. At least by the seams, use some of the old filament or some of the leftover filament to continue to fill that in as well. This is normal to me. Basically always slicing helmets and then putting them together. So this isn't the end of the world. Yes, I would have liked it to come out as good as the first one, but still got two amazing helmets. From there, you can see that big glop and gloop of Bondo Spot Putty that I put in the back to make sure everything seemed together. Again, other than that, I just basically used some of the old filament and some of the raft to fill in that spot as easy as possible. And I just let the Bondo Spot Putty kind of dry a little bit so that way it became more like a putty or like a Play-Doh and then stuff that in there like that. From there was just my basic or regular sanding routine. Again, in all my other videos, when I was using my CR-10S, I had to split helmets and then connect them just to get uh, together like this. But of course, this case was just Bro, a little different. you probably can't even tell from looking at it straight on that this was the messed up one. Th let me know in the comments if this was a save or not. Now, obviously there is still, that was just like the first go. So of course I'm gonna still have to like go around to two more of Bondo because I didn't add any on the front line. And now the new exposure that I got, I'm gonna have to fill that in now as well. 80 grit, 80 grit, 80 grit sandpaper was the saver on this one. And I let this dry for a long time. This was probably like two, three weeks, maybe even more that I was just letting all of this material just sit in there and dry and harden. And it definitely paid off. So now if I feel like I have to reinforce it a little bit more, I definitely can now that it's looking like this because this is oh my goodness <laughs> but if i feel like i need to reinforce it a little bit more i will definitely from the inside just rinsed all the sand and there was a lot of sand just rinsed all that off so let's let this dry so after i got everything to lay down and got everything as even as possible basically it's just a repetition process of just bondle spot putty filler primer Bondo spot putty filler primer just doing that repetitively until that line disappears and you feel comfortable with it again as you can still see the line on the outside my main focus for bracing is going to be on the inside on the outside i just want to make sure everything lines up once everything lines up then I'm, i go a little bit deeper on the bracing on the inside now, there are some people who completely cover their helmets and bondo and spot putty what they do is just mix it with a, a bit of acetone just to make it spread and liquefy a little bit but I find this with my two times spot putty, or my two times flat gray primer, that's a, a bit better of a finish. In just a second, I'm gonna show you guys the full reveal, and I want you guys to guess which helmet is actually the one that was split and which one was the real one. Let me know in the comments. Okay, so from the front, let's see if you guys can tell which one is the one that had the shift and which one didn't. We'll call this number one. And we'll call this number two. So go ahead and leave the comments. Which one is it? Let me know in the comments if you got it right. It's this one. So some of you guys might believe it and some of you guys might not. But yeah, this is that same helmet from earlier. In the back, I have the other one all set and ready. The lenses came in as well as all the other accessories. I hope you guys did learn something in this video that one, not everything is a failed print and two, a strategy that you can now use and implement into your everyday 3D printer. Now, one thing that I did, didn't get, as you can tell from the video, this was kind of shot a long time ago, but when I filled in the back with all the Bondo and then from the inside, when I used the extra filament, that's the only part that I didn't show you guys, but in all my other videos, I kind of show you like using Bondo spot putty to fill in spots, but other than that, you guys seen how I soldered everything, made the line disappear, and just a lot of repetition of just sanding Bondo, sanding Bondo, just to make everything go away. Made this thing beautiful. So I'll count this as a success. That's 16 hours saved. Now you can say, hey, maybe in the time of me making this, that was more than 16 hours, but as you can tell from the channel, there's been a lot more videos. So it's given me time to take my time with this one and really make this thing pop. As I mentioned before, this is going to be part of a sponsor. Shout out to PCBWay. Make sure you guys do stay tuned for the full video. I'll still leave a link for some discounts if you do want to purchase something from PCBWay. Again, if you want to do what I do, but don't have a 3D printer, they can make it happen for you from regular PLA. 
to resin, to PETG, to anything that you're looking for. They'll be the one-stop shop. In the meantime, make sure you guys do stick around for the full video. Again, I'm going to be adding the paint, adding the lenses, and all the small pieces to make this look just like the movie. Besides that, thanks for hanging out. It's BZ Comics. Peace.